No. We'll do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. <laughs> Welcome to the At The IP Show. This is an astronomy-based podcast that is devoted to discussing astronomical equipment, stargazing tips, observing reports, and equipment reviews. We don't focus on the science of astronomy. There are plenty of shows that do that. The focus of At The IP is the visual observers, those backyard stargazers that enjoy taking their telescopes under the stars and those individuals wishing to join our ranks. After all, what matters to stargazers is what's at the eyepiece. Well, hello out there, my fellow backyard stargazers, and that's right. It's a live episode of At the Eyepiece. Now, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for any slip-ups here, because, boy, it's been a long, long time It's been a long road getting to this point, but let me catch you up. We've been doing this podcast for, oh gosh, well over five years now. And um, my new place I've been at now for about two. And as you may or may not have known, since I've been in here, it's been just a lot of work getting things done around the house, getting the you know, things uh, ready, and as a new homeowner, you, you've got things that you're working on all the time. And one of those things was getting my observatory ready to go. I've been working on it for a while, different itinerations, and I am now uh, at a functional level with this observatory, and I'm going to be doing a future episode here. Probably the next episode, I'll be talking about some observatory designs, and in particular, why I opted for the way that I opted with this setup. You may or may not know, I started visually as a visual observer. Um, I fell in love with being able to share the views online. That started with doing things with the um, virtual star party that was a Google Hangout for a while. And then, of course, we had uh, plenty of options available with Night Skies Network. I still love to do those. I don't get to doing them as often as I can for a variety of reasons. Mostly it's weather, but the other big thing has been not having the setup that uh, has been really been needed. So I've got it done. I'm in here now doing a broadcast. If you do hear some dogs barking, if you do hear a train going in the background, well, that's because I'm doing it live. And of course, I'm out in the actual observatory here, which is basically a 10 by 16 modified shed. But we'll get to that more in the episode coming up. That's going to be the next episode here. Uh, Let's go ahead and talk uh, the format here, what we're going to do for this episode of At The IP. So, of course, we always like to talk about new equipment out there or things going on that may help you as a fellow backyard stargazer get some new equipment. So let's jump right on into that. Now, this is something that literally I, I had just seen Probably maybe an hour ago before, you know, doing a little bit of research for the show here. Mead has just announced um, the LX85 series of telescopes. Now, these are a German equatorial mount uh, with their uh, OTAs on top, of course. This is a newer style German equatorial mount uh, from Mead. It has a 33-pound capacity. It has AudioStar with 33,000 object go-to. It has permanent periodic error correction as well. And it looks like from their website, you can get everything mounted on it from their 6-inch ACF to, let's see, of course, their 8-inch scope. You can get on there, uh, their 80-millimeter apochromatic refractor, all the way up to a 5-inch refractor, and I think I saw one other uh, 6-inch Maksutov Cassegrain is also out there. A 70-millimeter astrograph, you might, if you were looking for a very portable small optical tube for specifically for astrophotography. And I believe I also saw something about a 115-millimeter uh, APO refractor uh, as well. 
So yes, indeed, that is uh, out there. So German Equatorial Mount, um, you know, it it doesn't look like there's really anything specific about it. Um, it's got a very interesting design of a square weight. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. So that will help it visually stand out from the crowd. But if you want more information, I recommend heading on over to mead.com and finding out more about their new LX85 series. Now, right about now is a good time also if you're looking for a scope. Um, you have a couple of different options out there that are very, very popular. Celestron continues to have a sale with their Nexstar SE series. I'm looking at my favorite, current favorite, astronomical vendor, High Point Scientific. And they have quite a few different bundles there with quite a few different savings for you. It looks like up to a couple hundred dollars for their Nexstar SE series. Those are a very, very popular go-to Alt azimuth telescope setup, everything from a 5 inch Schmidt to the 8 inch Schmidt. So uh, you have a number of options to go with that, and that's saving up to $200 currently. And I believe that's going to go through the end of the month. Another vendor that I'm also very, very impressed with, and uh, although I, I actually have their mount, I, in fact, you know what? I'm going to probably do a, that is a great idea. I'm going to, I'm going to do a mini review on the Explorer Scientific Twilight 2 mount. It's a mount that I've recently picked up, uh, used, and I really actually haven't even used it yet. So I'm, I'll go ahead and do a mount. But Explorer Scientific has got a variety of things going on for sale right now. They've extended their, um, it looks like uh, Memorial Day, Flag Day, Father's Day, Summer Solstice, all wrapped up into one. Um, May 24th through June 30th, these sales are going on at Ex this appears to be from eyepieces, etc. They are selling quite a bit of their eyepieces on sale right now. The 92, the 100 degree, the 120, three inch eyepieces and diagonals, etc. So you might want to check that out. As well as the beautiful, and I will say I really think the color combination on the Explore Scientific Trust Tube Dobsonian Telescopes was really sharp with that black and yellow uh, combination. They look really, really good. I will also point out, because I've been looking at this too, again, bouncing back to my High Point Scientific friend, um, and no, they don't contribute anything to the show. I just, I really just like to give a shout out to vendors that I think are doing a phenomenal job. And uh, they also have a number of uh, options there, I think from Neef that they've picked up from the Explore Scientific. So if you want to get a good deal on some other experiences, uh, equipment from Explorer Scientific, you might want to check them out too. Now, here's something that doesn't happen that often, and that is a sale or a rebate, more correctly, for Teleview. And here is, uh, I'm going to read this directly from the official rules and rebate form here. For pur purchases June 1st to July 31st, um, and that is valid for the U.S., uh, vendors. So sorry anyone else there from the UK or outside. If you're looking to get some premium um, eyepieces, you'll want to, uh, well, you won't be eligible for it, it looks like, for this rebate. But it does have, uh, looks like some $10 rebates, $25, $30 rebates, $65. So it's kind of all over the place there. I would recommend you going on over, this is their March Madness 2018 rebate form. You can do a search on there for at the uh, Teleview website for that and, um, you know, get some high quality eyepieces from Teleview and uh, get some money back on those because that doesn't happen too often that they go on sale. So eat that up while you can get it. Now, one of my favorite software programs is Sky Safari. Um, I use it on my Mac. Uh, it's my planetarium program that I use actually to control the telescope for electronically assisted observing. Uh, it happens to be the Pro version 5, but right now you can go ahead and get the Sky Safari, um, I guess you'll say it's the introductory version, for free. That's right. Head on over to for more information. You can download it for your Android if you look in the Play Store. And if you go to, of course, if you're iOS, 
you can go to the Apple Store. Now, it looks like that is only for, of course, iOS or Android devices. If you're PC or Mac, you're probably still looking at the very affordable $10 uh, for their entry level version. Now, I will say they do have a couple of, or they have three different versions actually that are available to you. They're actually on Sky Safari 6 now. And no, I have not uh, downloaded nor used Sky Safari 6 yet. Um, but uh, Sky Safari 6 is $9.99. The Sky Safari 6 Plus, which gets you from 120,000 stars all the way up to 2.5 million stars, 32,000 deep sky objects to choose from, the full NGCIC catalog, 7,000 asteroids, comets, and more uh, for $29.99. And the Pro version includes over 100 million stars, 3 million galaxies, down to, get this, 18th magnitude, 750,000 solar system objects, including every comet and asteroid ever discovered. Plus, you get the telescope control, and that's 59 99. So if you're looking for a great planetarium program for your phone or your tablet, you want to check that out. I really, really recommend that. Now let's go ahead and just double check my notes here to see if there's anything else that just I'm missing. Just one moment, please. Yep, give me a hold there. And I think that's all of the vendor information that I wanted to cover for this particular episode. Now let's talk about some events coming up. One of the big events, one that I've been pleased to participate in, I think ever since its inception, and I want to say that in one form or another, it's been going on since maybe 2014, maybe a little bit before that, but this is International Sunday, and this is a once a year worldwide outreach event basically for our closest star of the sun and it they time it right around the solstice now this year the solstice is on june 21st but the actual event for international sunday 2018 is going to be on june 24th so you can go ahead and create any type of outreach event that you want um, follow the link. There's a Facebook page there. If you head on over to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash I-N-T-L Sunday, that is the official page for the International Sunday group, Facebook group there. You can also, which is pretty cool, you can also download a certificate that you can hand out and I will tell you, these the, most of the time, kids love getting stuff like this. If you get a kid that can uh, observe the sun, and you want to remind the parents, you want to remind everyone, actually, that, that is going to come up to the scope if you're going to participate in this event. You want to remind them, this is safe solar viewing. Uh, you have a very specialized telescope. Maybe you'll have a hydrogen alpha telescope. Maybe you'll have something like a calcium uh, K filter going on there. Uh, maybe you'll have just a white light scope. Maybe you'll be lucky enough to share both. Whatever it might be, you want to remind them that this is very specialized equipment. Never to look at the sun with just your unaided eye, etc. You want to emphasize safety, but you also want to emphasize that really and truly stepping up to the eyepiece at this event, International Sunday, can really be a, well, I'll say it, it can be a life-changing event. I mean, you never know what someone, especially a young kid, is going to do when they step up to that telescope and they see the sun. Maybe they'll catch a prominence. Who knows, maybe during this time we might be... Uh, Lucky enough to catch some white light activity with a sunspot group or an active region going across. And I remember back to my fond days in high school when somebody showed me uh, Jupiter. Um, that's hooked me there ever since then. So this could be what hooks um, the next fellow backyard stargazer with helping out and participating with this International Sunday. So if they come up to the eyepiece and they take a view, you know, have those forms printed out. You can get those, again, directly from the Facebook group. Just look up the International Sunday. 
and you can have those printed up ready to go um, and give it to the kid put the name on it there they, they get a big kick out of that they really do they, they're very very proud of it so you know the other thing and this is going to take up a little bit more time but I did this personally I'm going to jump off here I'm going to branch off here for a moment and again this is back to Jupiter I, I had a neighbor with a young lady and and uh, her daughter came over and we were I was showing her Jupiter not through the IP well actually we did I take that back we, we did an eyepiece view of Jupiter and then I also asked her would she like to help me take a picture of it so we went ahead and we, we grabbed uh, my camera. We hooked it up to the telescope. She used the computer and, you know, I basically told her, okay, click this button here. And she starts grabbing the video file. I said, okay, so now your video file. I said, I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, I'm going to do what's called processing this image for you. And I'll give you the picture tomorrow. So I had one of those small little portable color printers. We were able to print up a little... Uh, picture of Jupiter and she just loved it now I'm saying this because it would be kind of a neat little idea especially if you are the type of person that that does a little bit of eyepiece viewing but you also like to do the camera stuff and you have a camera you have a computer there wouldn't it be really neat if you had one of those portable printers battery operated printers colored little printers that print on a four by six to maybe do a quick little image grab process it and print it out and give it out to the kids right there and right then and there. So anyway, I'm just throwing that out there. That just popped right into the head there. And I figured I would share that uh, with you. So that is coming up for International Sunday, June 24th. There's plenty of programs out there and it is international. You got people all over the place posting up on this Facebook group about their club's events and what they're doing. So it's really going to be a really cool event to go ahead and participate if you can. So that is International Sunday. Okay, so next up, we are going to wrap up here with talking about Jupiter. Now, I said just a little bit ago, Jupiter was the biggest, that, well, it's of course, it's the biggest planet in the solar system, but it was what hooked me on astronomy. Uh, it was the hilltops of Western Maryland. We were out there looking for Halley's Comet. Yeah, that ages me a little bit, but I don't care. <laughs> we were looking for Halley's Comet, and we did see the comet. It was, you know, typical comet, right? Everybody knows, remembering back to those days, Halley's Comet really was a little bit of an under, underperformer. Uh, the last swing around there in the 80s, what was that, 84? 84, 85. And um, there was a bright star to the west, and my teacher, and I, I wish to God I could remember his name. He was my earth science teacher. And he pointed the scope towards the bright star. And I happened to be the first person that was there. I said, you want to look at this? And I said, yeah, sure. So I looked through that eyepiece. And it was I was expecting to see just a bright star or something. But it was Jupiter. And he's talking in the background, talking to you. Okay, you see Jupiter? I'm like, yeah. You see those bands? I'm like, yeah. Those are clouds. And that blew me away. I'm like, <laughs> I'm seeing clouds on a whole nother planet. Well, needless to say, you know, the four moons too. I saw the Galilean moons there. I was hooked from that point on. So that's why Jupiter holds a very special place in my heart for astronomy. And that's why this episode here, I'm going to be doing a beginning of the month episode that's going to primarily focus on events coming up for the month just for Jupiter. It's kind of why we hinted with the just Jupiter. So I am going to, let's start off actually with a few things here at the beginning of the month. Let's get a few facts here about Jupiter uh, out of the way. Now, right now it's magnitude two, negative 2.5 with an angular size of 43.9 arc seconds. And it's about 4.49 astronomical units away. By the end of this month, it's going to drop to negative uh, 2.3 in magnitude, it's going to shrink just a little bit to 41.5 arc seconds and get a distance of 4.75 astronomical units. And it's well positioned right now. It's going to be visible um, anytime pretty much right after dark. 
uh, till about the wee hours of the morning. For my particular location, for example, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, uh, Central Time, by the way, it's going to be visible between 8 and 5 a.m., just about. And it's going to be very low at that time, 7 degrees, but it's going to get a little bit higher as, of course, the month progresses through. So here's going to be the list of events. I'm going to give you these events starting now, June. Um, well, I'm going to give it June 4th, of course. I'm getting a little bit late start here on this podcast. But we're going to start with June 4th events for Jupiter for Jupiter, excuse me, and these are going to be events that are specifically the Great Red Spot Transit as well as any shadow transits. Now, of course, I realize there's other phenomenon going on with Jupiter. You can have uh, uh, physical Galilean moon transits, of course, going across the face of the planet. You can also have uh, periods where the moons, Galilean moons, are going behind the shadow. Those are called eclipses. But I think these are probably the more popular of events, shadow transits, as especially the great red spot transits. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start reviewing. So during the afternoon here and evening of June 4th, you will go ahead and have it at 6.09. And again, I want to emphasize this is central time. So adjust for your specific time zone. When Jupiter is about 18 degrees above the horizon, you're going to catch the very last views of a great red spot transit. But don't worry, in a few more hours, on the morning hours of June 5th there at 1.02 a.m., great red spot will begin to be visible yet again when Jupiter is still 21 degrees above the horizon. So you'll have a little bit of time to start viewing the Great Red Spot as it swings back around into view before the Jupiter gets too low uh, in the west and of course the sun starts rising up there. But back on the evening again of June 5th at 8.54 p.m., Great Red Spot transit's going to first be visible when Jupiter is 38 degrees above the horizon. At 10.25 p.m., you're going to have mid-transit. And then at 23 or or 11.56 p.m., when Jupiter's still well above the horizon, 30 degrees, it's last visible. So that's a good transit opportunity on the 5th. Let's jump to June 6th. At 6.16, Jupiter's going to be about 21 degrees above the horizon. You're going to have a mid-transit at that point. So you're going to catch the later half of this transit. And that is going to end by 7.47 on June 6th. On June 7th at 12.06 a.m., you're going to have Io Shadow Shadow Transit. This is going to be a mid-transit at that time. And it's going to uh, go ahead and be visible for some time after that. So enjoy that transit as well. And that's actually going to begin, it looks like, at 23, uh, that's 11. So it's going to begin on the 6th at 11 p.m. and still be mid-transit at 12.06 on the morning of the 7th. So keep that in mind. Again, this is the Io Shadow Transit. Also on the 7th at 10.32, you have a great red spot transit, first visible. Jupiter's 37 degrees above the horizon first then. And at 12.03 a.m., you're going to have a mid-transit point, And it's going to wrap up at about um, 1.34 a.m. for the Great Red Spot Transit. Back on the evening of June 8th, at 6.35, when you're still going to have quite a bit of light, you're going to start to see a uh, the mid-transit point for Io. It's actually going to begin... Um, no, I take that back. It's actually going to be about... Um, 7.40 at that time as well. Having some difficulty here understanding the output from the sky planning software here. But let's see, uh, June 8th, back to a great red spot transit. Now this is going to start when Jupiter is only 23 degrees above the horizon. There's plenty of light still at the time because it's 6.23 p.m., by 7.54 p.m., you have your mid-transit point, and it's going to wrap up at about 9.25 p.m. On the 
evening of June 9th at 5.17 p.m. If you happen to be out observing at that time, you'll catch the last remnants of a great red spot transit as well. So let's go to June 10th at 10, I'm sorry, at 12.10 a.m. Your first great red spot transit will begin and it's going to be mid-transit point on the morning of June 10th at 1.41 a.m. And you can continue, of course, to watch that transit um, egress off to the western limb there until the morning hours. Back to the evening hours of June 10th at 8.02 p.m., you have another great red spot transit that will begin at 9.33 p.m. on the 10th. It'll be midway. And then at 11.04 on June 10th, it'll be wrapped up and over when Jupiter's still a very good 33 degrees above the horizon. On the evening of the 11th, you will have a transit that will begin at 5.24 p.m., so still plenty of light, though, out. Jupiter's going to be about 15 degrees above the horizon. Um, by 6.55 p.m., that great red spot transit will end. June 12th at 9.40, however, 9.40 p.m., you have a first great red spot transit visible. Jupiter's at a very good 39 degrees above the horizon. At 11.11 p.m., it's mid-transit point, and it's wrapping up at about 12.42 p.m. Jupiter's still a good 18 degrees above the whole western horizon at that time. June 13th at 7.02, you have Jupiter at a mid-transit point that time and wrapping up a great red spot transit that evening at 8:33 Jupiter still 33 degrees above the horizon but it should be pretty dark by then again on the 13th at um let's see here you have a Europa shadow transit so you are going to have that start at that's actually going to be the mid-transit point here. So June 13th at 7.29, you're going to have Europa mid-transit at that time. It'll wrap up just under, an, a little bit over an hour later at 8.38 p.m. And Jupiter is still a healthy 39 degrees above the horizon. So you have two phenomena to look forward to on that day on the 13th. On the 14th at 11.18, you have your first great red spot transit visible. Jupiter is a healthy 30 degrees above the horizon at that time. On June 15th, the morning of at 12.49 a.m. is its mid-transit point. And it'll wrap up at about 2.20 a.m., but it'll be very, very low by that time anyway, so I wouldn't even worry about trying to catch it on its um, on the western limb there on Jupiter. Also on June 15th at 8, let's see here, at 8, uh, no, at 7.24 p.m., you have an IO transit that begins. At 8.29 p.m., IO shadow is mid-transit at that point. Jupiter is a good 39 degrees above the horizon at that time. And it's wrapping up on the evening of June 15th at 9.35 p.m. Also on June 15th, so again, we have some good events on June 15th because we also have a great red spot transit, and this begins at 7.10 p.m. It's midway at 8.41 p.m., and your transit is over for the great red spot at 10.12 p.m. Jumping to the following evening, June 16th. Um, this is pr actually, we're going to skip that because it looks like those are happening well early, probably too early for you actually to enjoy them. So we will skip through those. Still plenty of light at that time. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the evening of June or the morning rather of June 17th at 1257 AM. You have a great red spot that is uh, first visible and you can catch that for a good while. Um, it's going to wrap up. It's going to be a bit mid-transit. It looks like at about 2:20 uh, a.m. But Jupiter's going to be really low on your western horizon. 
on the evening of June 17th at 8.48, you have a great red spot transit that begins. Jupiter is a good 39 degrees when this starts uh, at 10.19 p.m. It is at its mid-transit point. It's still a good 35 degrees above. It flipped past the meridian now. And at 11.50 p.m., when it's still at a good 23 degrees above the western horizon, that's when the great red spot's last visible. Jumping to the evening hours, the early evening hours of June 18th, at 4.40 p.m., Jupiter's just 13 degrees above the horizon. This is when your great red spot transit begins. Now, it's mid-transit at 6.10. That's still going to be plenty of light, however, uh, then. But you want to maybe uh, start to catch it. You, you might be able to see this. Uh, it does uh, wrap up at 7.41 p.m. Uh, on that evening, Jupiter's 37 degrees above the horizon, but there's still plenty of light out at that time. On the evening of June 19th, you have a great red spot transit that begins at 1026 p.m., mid-transit point at 1157 p.m. June 20th at 749 p.m., you have a great red spot mid-transit point at that time, uh, it's getting darker by that time. I show this uh, planetarium program listing. This is about 64% dark. Jupiter is about 38 degrees above the horizon at that time on the 20th. And then it wraps up by 920. Still a little bit of light though out at that time. I show it at 85% dark only. You do have, however, a Europa shadow transit as well occurring on the 20th on the evening of. And at uh, 856, it looks like you have Europa Shadow begin its transit. And by 1005 is its mid-transit point. Don't have a listing for its outbound on the, on the western side there. On the 22nd, uh, looks like you're going to have a great red spot begin to be visible at 1205 am but jupiter's only going to be about 18 degrees above the horizon so you might be able to watch that for a while in the wee hours uh but it's going to be fairly fairly low there might be might be okay to get it by the time it reaches mid-transit maybe not depending upon the seeing conditions june 22nd um this is the evening of june 22nd starting at 9 19 io shadow transit begins Jupiter's a 38 degrees above the horizon at that time, but it's only about 76% dark, it shows here. So the evening hours are getting, the day is getting longer and longer and longer. Uh, 1024 is when Io shows mid-transit point for that. June 22nd as well at uh, 7.56 p.m., Jupiter starts in Great Red Spot Transit. 9.27 p.m. is its mid-transit point. Jupiter, by the way, is 37 degrees above the horizon at that time. June 22nd at 10.58 is when the Great Red Spot should be last visible. And Jupiter is still at a good 28 degrees above the western horizon at that time. June 23rd, let's see here. You know, those are all going to be well into the evening uh, twilight, so I'm not going to cover those. Let's jump to the 24th, June 24th. Great Red Spot Transit will begin at 9.34 p.m. Mid-transit point will be at 11.05 p.m. And your last time, uh, Great Red Spot Transit will be at, what is that, 12.36 p.m., Jupiter is going to be well low on the western horizon as we get closer and closer here to the end of June, and that's only going to be 11 degrees above the horizon at that time. June 25th, the twilight hours there at 7.51 p.m. It looks like you have a Ganymede transit that begins. Oh, correction, correction. At, at 6.52, the Ganymede shadow correction, uh, Ganymede shadow begins. I don't know why it mixes it up like this, but let's see. It's 751. It's mid-transit, and by 851, your Ganymede shadow should be exiting Jupiter there, but Jupiter is 40 degrees above the horizon at that time, but it's still only 75% dark, so keep that in mind. And let's see here. On the 
evening of June 25th as well, you have the opportunity to start to see a great red spot transit starting at 6.57 p.m. Jupiter's 36 degrees above the horizon, but it's only 12% dark at that time. 8.28 is when that great red, red spot transit wraps up. Jupiter's still good 40 degrees above the horizon, but it's only 75% dark. All right, let's go through here. We are almost through with our Jupiter events for the month of June. Let's jump to June 26th at 11.13 p.m. Great Red Spot is first visible. Jupiter's 23 degrees above the horizon at that time. And by... I lost my place here. By 10.06, it's last visible. There we go. On the June 28th. Uh, well, all these, again, are going to be well into the twilight. I'm not actually going to cover those. Let's jump to June 29th. This is at 8.43. Great red spot transit begins. Jupiter is 38 degrees above the horizon then on the 29th. Um, also, then at 10.14, it's mid-transit point. Jupiter's still 30 degrees above the horizon, and it should be last visible at about 11.45 p.m. Jupiter is just 16 degrees above the horizon on that evening. And let's see what we can get in there on our last evening of June. Well, it looks like on the last evening of June, you're going to have just a little bit of great red spot vis visible. Jupiter's going to be 30 degrees above the horizon, 52% uh, dark, however. And it looks like a great red spot transit will be wrapping up at about that time at 7.36 p.m. So that wraps up our Jupiter events for the month of June. Now, as I'm doing this live here, and uh, it is Sunday, June 3rd at about 10, gosh, it's already 10 o'clock. I'm looking forward because it's a clear night. I've got the scope ready to go. The computer's obviously ready to go. Folks, I'm going to get some time out at my own eyepiece. Of course, my eyepiece is an electronic eyepiece, but no matter if your eyepiece is glass or your eyepiece is CMOS or CCD for electronically assisted observing, it's just all about getting out there and observe. So thanks for listening to this episode of At the Eyepiece, and I sure hope you have some clear skies to go out there and enjoy some of the events that are coming up. I look forward to our next episode where we will be talking about the observatory and the reason why I chose the design that I did. Thanks everybody for listening and clear skies. Thank you for listening to this episode of At The Eyepiece. If you would like to participate in a future show as a featured guest, or perhaps you have suggestions for future show topics, send me an email at theeyepiece at gmail.com. Check out our blog at theeyepiece.blogspot.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Just put in a search for at the eyepiece. I'd like to thank George Wood for his bumper and exit music. This is 8-Bit Junkie, and we obtained that from podsafeaudio.com. So here's wishing all of you plenty of clear skies so that we can all talk about it next time at the eyepiece.